Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the GORUCK 26 liter Heritage GR2. And I've been a big fan of some of the newer styles that GORUCK has been releasing over the past couple of years. I was really excited when they released the GR2 in a 26 liter size as it seemed to be the best of both worlds as far as providing an everyday carry sized bag with the additional organizational options that were available on the larger GR2. And then I was also super excited when the Heritage line was announced. The Heritage GR1 quickly became one of my favorite bags of all time. And so when I saw the announcement of the 26 liter GR2 in a Heritage Edition, it really seemed like kind of the best of all worlds, at least for my particular preferences. So I was super excited to have a chance to test this out over the past couple of weeks. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I wanna thank Huckberry for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. To me, the Heritage line does a great job of updating GORUCK's minimalistic vibe and making it a little more timeless and versatile. This is a style that I think is gonna work well in pretty much any environment that you take it, whether you're going into an office, exploring a city, going into the outdoors, or traveling. As far as the materials, like we saw with the Heritage GR1, the bag is very solidly built. The exterior fabric is a wax canvas that is gonna patina very nicely as you use it more. It's something that feels like it's gonna hold up over a longer term. In general, wax canvas bags have proven to be very durable across history and this one doesn't feel any difference. I really love how after using it and loading it out, it's already starting to kind of have its own sort of distinct look. The bag is offered in a few different colors. On Huckberry, they have this field tan version. They have a brush brown and a slate. I was a little bit confused on which one to get as I really like the dark oak. That's actually the one that I got for my GR1. The Heritage, this one is dark oak, so it's gonna be a little bit darker than the field tan. Uh, I hadn't seen a side-by-side -side comparison before, so hopefully this kind of helps make uh, it a little bit easier to choose which one is better for you. So far, I've really liked the field tan. It matches up with a lot of different outfits, but again, you know, you can kind of just pick the one that suits your style best. And this wax canvas is something that you can re-wax to make it a little bit more weather resistant or just improve that as the bag ages. And of course you have some very smooth working and durable YKK zippers all throughout. While we're talking about the materials, you also have a leather accenting on the handles and bottom of the bag. This is a red wing leather that feels very durable. It's also gonna age nicely. It'll start to show some you know, markings and you develop a patina like the wax canvas. The handle at the top feels very comfortable with this material and still super durable. Everything is well reinforced. And then on the bottom, I really like the wider and sort of flatter base that you have with this leather. To me, it's one of the better self-standing GORUCKS that I've used. It's not a shape that is gonna be completely reliable, but as far as the other ones that I've tested out, this is the one that I've been able to place down and just have it stand up on its own most reliably. So a nice kind of bonus there with this version of the bag. And then looking around the rest of the outside, one of the big things with the Heritage line is that you don't have molly webbing on the sides or the front, so you have less ability to customize the bag with pouches or you know attaching things with carabiners. You may be able to get some of those added by sending the bag to the SCARS program from GORUCK. I haven't done anything like that and I like the cleaner and more minimal vibe. That's part of what lends to the versatility in my opinion. And then on the front you have of course the Velcro area where you can customize the bag with a variety of morale patches. Included with the bag you have one from Huckberry that says see you out there. I really like the personalization there. That's probably the one that I'll leave as a default because it also has matching leather like the handle and the bottom. And then moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 26 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I was easily able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me on my day to day and I still had some leftover space. And I like that with GORUX bags, they always try to maintain a pretty slim silhouette. This bag can get pretty big when you pack it out, but even when it's packed out, it never feels so overwhelmingly bulky that it would be uncomfortable to take onto public transit for walking around a crowded city or for carrying onto pretty much any domestic or international airline. 
Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here, very well padded. And as I mentioned with the Heritage GR1, to me, these style of straps are some of the most comfortable that I've used from GORUCK. They just feel a little bit less abrasive. You still don't have a ton of breathability on the straps. There's no mesh or anything like that, but you don't have that 1000D Cordura kind of rubbing on your shoulders. And it just feels kind of softer and ready to go out of the box. I've mentioned in many of my GORUCK videos that I feel like I have to really break those straps in and carry a ton of weight before they start to feel kind of ready to go. So. These have felt awesome. And then one additional thing to call out on the straps is that you don't have any webbing to add a sternum strap. There's no sternum strap included with the bag. So some people might like that, you know, when they load this out as it can hold quite a bit of stuff. But for me in general, with this size of bag, a sternum strap isn't really something that I use too much. And then taking a look at the back paneling, this has also been pretty comfortable. Nothing super different from the other GORUCK bags that we've looked at on the channel. So well distributed padding. You do have some slight air channels here, but in general, it's not gonna be the most breathable bag and your back is gonna get pretty sweaty while you're wearing this. Jumping into the organizational options, to me, this is where the GR2 really shines. There's a nice variety of pockets all throughout the bag. On the front, you have the slanted quick access pocket that is on most GORUCK bags. And this is a pocket that's not always super popular as it's kind of narrow and hard to use. I find that with the Heritage Editions, it gets a little bit easier as the material just has more give, uh, but it's still not a ton of space. This is where I would store something like my iPad mini, a Kindle, a notebook, or maybe pair it with something like the Evergoods Cap 1 or the GORUCK Wired Up to just give your stuff a little bit more organization. And then at the top of the bag, we have one of the best updates, in my opinion, that GORUCK has made to their bags. They've included this quick access pocket on their Heritage lines. This is a type of pocket that I use most on pretty much any bag that I use as it's gonna hold the items that I grab most regularly during the day and they implemented it here really nicely. This wasn't present on the GR2 that I featured a while back, the 26 liter, it didn't have this. So I was very excited that this edition provided this extra option as well. And you have a nice amount of space here for the types of items that I would typically grab most. So I have my Apple AirPods, and then I also have a lightning cable with a power brick to charge my phone. And then on the back, you have GORUCK's bomb-proof laptop compartment. Nothing super different here from the other bags that we've looked at. So it has this zipper that's kind of covered by the straps. You have to keep that in mind as you're opening this up. And then you can kind of grab it from the side. This is gonna be able to hold a you know 15 or 16 inch laptop comfortably currently i have a 13 inch macbook air which fits in there easily there's a leftover space you of course have the false bottom which is going to help prevent the device from getting damaged when you place the bag down a little bit harder and no sort of fleece lining or anything on the inside you do have a little velcro area where you can remove the frame sheets that's in the compartment. If you wanna do that, I generally try not to remove them too much because they can be quite hard to get back in as I realized uh, when I was testing out the bullet ruck. So something to keep in mind, but a great you know implementation on the laptop compartment. And then taking a look at the front, you have two kind of primary compartments. And this is one of the things that makes the GR2 really unique. I called this out in my review for the Recycle Firefighter 24 Hour Backpack Plus is that it has dual clamshell compartments, which gives you a lot of flexibility with how you can organize, see, and pack your stuff. It's the biggest difference between the GR1 and the GR2 is that whole extra compartment that you have, it makes the bag a little bit deeper. So, you know, the, here's the GR1 for reference, a lot slimmer, very simple. You just have one primary compartment, on the GR2, you have this extra section here, which kind of sticks out at the bottom. You can see about how much additional depth that gives, but I love that. I think that that makes this such a versatile bag, both for EDC and minimal travel. And so, you know, you can open this up completely and you get a full sense of all of the space that's provided in this main area. And because again, of the wax canvas heritage materials, Everything just sort of molds very easily around what you store here. So it feels like you can just squeeze in extra items. And so you have just an open space here, kind of on the back where I was able to rest some of the bulkier items that I normally carry with me. So I have a ghost well pouch from Tom Bin with some of the smaller tech and EDC items that I typically have. And then I have a packable rain jacket. 
as well as my Beats Studio wireless headphones. And so those items, I can all just rest there. There's a little pocket of volume here that's good for that type of thing. And then behind that, there is a mesh zippered compartment with a horizontal zipper. These are always useful so that you can access these from the side of the bag. I don't tend to use these that much as they don't have a ton of volume or elasticity. They're great for holding items if you don't use pouches in the way that I do. But for me, I just like that they stay out of the way until I need them. And then on the flap of this compartment, you have two additional zippered pockets, another mesh horizontal one that you can reach in and grab stuff from the side. Good amount of space here. I didn't really pack anything into it at the moment, but this can hold, again, something like the Evergoods Cap 1. Above that, you have the patch on the inside that identifies this as a GR2 heritage style it's built in the USA. So I really like that that's included. And then at the top, you have an additional quick access pocket. I always love this on GoRux bags as it offers a pretty decent amount of volume for items that I grab regularly but don't fit in the top quick access pocket. So at the moment, what I have here is my sunglasses with a case. Uh, but beyond that, I still had some leftover space if I had wanted to store something else in there. And then on the other side, another really cool aspect of the GR2s in particular is that they have the built-in field pocket. So you have this area at the top which offers a nice amount of volume and some additional internal organization. So this opens up fairly wide to make it easy to grab whatever you need. And I have some items resting on the front, just kind of on their own. So I have my GoPro, and then I have a little headlamp that I like carrying with me, as well as a tin that has some band-aids and ointments. And on the back of the compartment, you have some simple mesh slip pockets that have a little bit of elasticity. So you'll have some flexibility with what you can store. At the moment, what I have in here is a deck of playing cards. And then I also have a little manicure set. And next to that one, there is a slightly smaller slip pocket, similar style as far as the elasticity and the mesh. Great for something a little bit thinner or smaller. Currently what I have in here is my Peak Design mobile tripod. And so I know I sound like a broken record, but again, I really like the fact that this has these two clamshell style compartments, particularly when I'm using this as a minimal travel bag. I kind of like to treat this front section as my EDC and tech sort of area. So my dongles, chargers, anything that I need to kind of get my work done, I would probably put in here. And then the secondary compartment, which is a little bit larger, is what I would normally use as kind of my travel area. So this is where I would store my clothes for while, while I'm on my trip. And you know, with the bucket style that the GR1 and 2s typically have in their main area, it's really simple. You can really get a lot of things into this space, even when it is a little bit smaller. At the moment, what I currently have here is my larger Peak Design compressible packing cube. And then I also have a dock kit which are the items that I would you know, really need to be able to get through a longer weekend or even a week of travel if needed. I still would have had some additional capacity in the other compartments to store an extra pair of shoes or maybe some additional clothing, a jacket if needed. But those are kind of the primary items and they fit very comfortably into this larger kind of bucket. On the back of this compartment, you have the same slip pocket. that has got a little bit of elasticity that we've seen in a lot of other Go Ruck bags. So this is gonna be good for holding a ruck plate or even for separating out like a notebook, a tablet. It is slightly padded and I like how it comes up and then it just kind of sits against the back when it's not in use. On the back, you also have a few rows of Molly webbing where you can attach additional accessories. You can customize it with pouches. I typically don't use these too much as I just prefer to take advantage of the space as is. And then at the top, you can kind of get a better view of the quick access pocket. So nice amount of volume here. When it's full, it does take up a little bit of space, but I think that they struck the balance well with allowing you to use that and not have it interfere with how you organize here. And then on the other side, you have just a few more mesh zippered pockets here. And so I don't use these too, too much as everything is typically in pouches but it's still nice to have these for maybe some medicines, toiletries, things that you don't want kind of floating around loosely in the bag and you can easily see what's inside of this pocket. Same at the top, similar style here. This one is a little bit smaller and slimmer. This is a great spot for storing maybe something that's a little bit more sensitive like a passport or in my case, I have a field notes notebook just kind of as a placeholder and I also have my air card holder. So again, an area that's a little bit more hidden, not so easy for a pickpocket to get to. 
and then it just stays out of the way if not in use. So I really like the variety of pockets offered throughout both of the compartments, the amount of space that it provides, and just the general layout of the GR2. And then you add in the fact that it has the heritage vibes and aesthetic, and to me it just is a really versatile bag very durable and if you're looking for something that can work well for edc or minimal travel then this is going to be one of the best options that you can check out and so to wrap up it's been a great experience testing out the heritage gr2 over the past couple of weeks you can currently purchase this on Huckberry's site for about 545 dollars so definitely premium pricing on this one even by go rook standards which tend to be a little bit higher priced and you are getting a lot of value for the price. The materials here feel great. This is a bag that's gonna be with you for a very long time to come. GORUCK also has an awesome lifetime warranty. There's an excellent feature set on the bag. And the bags are also assembled in the USA, but there's also gonna be some other great bags at lower price points that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bags these made me think of were some of the other GORUCK bags that I've tested out, such as their Bullet Ruck, the Laptop Edition. I've looked at the GR1, both kind of the classic Molly version and the Heritage GR1, as well as some of their GR2 backpacks. And all of those don't come in at this same price point. So the Bullet Ruck you can now get for under $200, I believe. And then there's different editions of the GR1. If you don't want the Heritage, there is a 500D version. So there's a few different styles that you can check out where you can save a little bit of money and still get that really solid build quality, the clamshell style opening, bomb proof laptop compartment, you know, just a really reliable bag overall. So definitely recommend checking out some of the in-depth videos and comparison videos that I've done on GORUCK's bags if you wanna get something kind of like this. The next bag this made me think of is the Axiom 24 pack from Triple Ot Design, which is another premium price bag that is made in the USA. The Axiom pack has a great organizational layout, lots of pockets, it's kind of a nice alternative to something like the GR2. Um, it's got X-Pack fabric on the exterior, so a lot of weather resistance, a pretty comfortable harness system. At 24 liters, it comes in at a smaller size than this one, but it's a little bit bigger than the GR1 in the 21 liter size. So, you know, it just gives you a little bit of extra flexibility if that's something that you're looking for. Again, very solidly built. They can be a little bit hard to get, particularly if you're looking for a specific sort of color combination. But if you're looking for a bag that's made in the USA, that's gonna offer plenty of organization and reliability and come in at a slightly lower price point than this, and that's gonna be a great option to check out. Another bag this made me think of is the Evergood CPL24, which was recently updated to have a more breathable back panel and a new exterior fabric that's gonna offer some nice weather resistance. The CPL24 has one of the best organizational layouts of any bag that I've tested out. Just a lot of very well laid out pockets with their own independent volume, well padded and suspended laptop sleeve. I really like how the harness system contours over your shoulders. It's offered in a 28 liter and a 24 liter size, so you can either get something a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger than this, but you know, has a clamshell style layout, really versatile bag overall. Might also be worth checking out the CTB35, which is the travel size version of the Evergoods backpack. So great for one bag travel. Hopefully they'll be releasing the CTB26 at some point in the future. We featured the Phoenix on the channel. That's one of the best bags that I've ever had a chance to test out. Make sure to check out the video that I did for that. I don't know if that's gonna be available. If you can get it on the secondhand markets, it's probably the best alternative to this bag here. But if you can't, the CPL24 is gonna be a great option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Air City Pack Pro, which is a really great tech and everyday bag. It has a more modern aesthetic, very minimal, has plenty of pocketing for all of your you know, accessories, dongles, chargers, Great laptop protection, it's suspended, well padded, it has a really comfortable harness system, similar to Evergoods where it kind of contours over your shoulders, highly weather resistant, it has a luggage pass through, external water bottle pocket, it kind of checks off all the boxes for what I'm typically looking for out of an EDC bag. And if you're looking for something in a lower price point that's gonna be reliable and work well across a number of environments, and that's gonna be one of the best options to consider. With that being said, the Heritage GR2 holds up really well against all those options. And if you have a little bit of a higher budget and you're a fan of GORUCK's products, their aesthetic, the quality of their brand, then this is gonna be a really great option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Heritage GR2 and how it compares to some of the other GORUCK bags that we've featured on the channel in the past, and also how it compares to some of the other premium priced EDC bags that are currently on the market. If there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. 
And I want to thank Huckberry again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.